Welcome back, Math 30 2s. Okay, so we are going to solve exponentials using logs. Like we solved uh, exponentials graphically, we changed them or solved them by. Um, what else we solved them by? Oh, yeah, we solved them graphically, we solved them by changing the base. And we are now going to solve them using logs. Okay, uh, just a reminder I probably should turn off this filter. Uh, let's turn it to this one here. Okay. Uh, just a reminder that if you have one of the older calculators, if I do a log base B of X, you don't have to go log X over log B to get the same value. So like in these examples down here, like you just literally plug this in your calculator, but you can also type in log six over log two, because some of these older calculators only have log base 10 in their calculators. So these ones, this is what you would type in your calculator to get these two answers. I'm not going to find those answers, but that's what you would type in your calculator. Uh, for these ones, though, we will find these ones here. So to do these ones in the older style calculators, we're going to go with log 100 over log 2, like in this one here, log 450 over log 5. So just remember, that's how you can get those two answers. So let me just pull up my calculator here. And let's just do this. Uh, let's see if we got log 100 divided by log 2. All right, so you're thinking when they solve that kind of question, you're thinking 2 to the power of something is equal to 100. So what would that number be? So 2 to the power of 6.6. .6. If I go 2 to the power of this answer I just got, I should get 100 out. Yeah. So this ends up being... 6.644. Now, the problem is if I use 6.644, I'm not going to get exactly 100. So I'm going to get something close to 100, but not exactly because I rounded my number a little bit. Uh, but it's close to being approximately what it should be. So we're okay with that. And the same thing with this one, like 5 to the power of something should be 450. This is for the next question. So I'm going to go log 450 divided by log 5. So my answer would be 3.796. I'm going to round that. So if I did that one, so 5 to the power of every time. I don't know what that that's, that's my wife. Uh, yeah, I get around 450. It's close to that number, but not quite the same. Right? But because I did round it, if I use the non-rounded answer, I would have got a better answer for this. Okay. So we're going to do the same kind of idea here. Well, not really for this one, but we're going to use that knowledge uh, to solve for things like that, uh, the log divided by log, to solve this next one here. Now, there's two ways to answer these questions. Okay, One way to answer the question, the, the much easier way to answer this question is to change, like we did before, change it into like a logarithmic form by taking the inverse, switching those two pieces. So I get x minus 1 on this side now, so on the right side. And on the left side, I'm going to have log base 3 of 20. <laughs> now log base 3 of 20 I can find. But again, we're just trying to find x here. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So this would be log base 3 of 20 bracket plus 1. I'm going to add 1 after the fact. So I'm going to find this number first. So log base 3 of 20. And remember, you could, like what we just did, we could do it two different ways. I'm going to try to get my thing in the right spot. Okay. So I can go log 20 divided by log 3. That's one way to do it. Or I can go alpha window, go to the log base, and then just put in a 3 and a 20 there. You get the same number, all right? Once you have that number, I'm going to plus one. Uh, it says round to how many decimal places here? Three decimal places. Okay, so I'm going to get three point seven two seven. Nope, oh, is equal to x. Okay, I'm going to do this. There. Okay. So there we go. That's the right answer. Now another way to do this which is more common when it comes to these kinds because the older style calculators and log base 10, 
is to take the log of both sides. So if I take the log of both sides, this is what happens. It's like taking the square of both sides or adding or subtracting a number from both sides. You're just trying to keep it balanced. So I'm going to take the log of both sides. I'm going to take the log of uh, log of 20 on the right side, the log of 3 to the power of x minus 1 on that side. And then I'm going to use my log law that if I raise something to an exponent, I can drop that exponent down to the front. Okay, I'm going to put it in brackets. It's very important that I put that one in brackets. Then I want to get this x by itself. So what's going to happen is I'm going to divide both sides by log 3. Log 3 is just a number. So if I just punch in log 3 in my calculator, it's that number. It's a very ugly number. But I'm going to divide both sides by log 3. And then you see that all we've done now is gotten the exact same answer we had before. Remember how to, to solve for log base 3 of 20, I could just go log 20 divided by log 3. It give me the same answer, right? So I've just gotten the same thing we just got before. I'm going to add the 1 over here. And when I do that, I get the 3.727. Right? So there are two ways to solve the question, though, which is easier. Obviously, this side over here is much easier than this side over here. But there are two ways. So don't get stuck in the thinking, where did Johnny go wrong? Johnny could do both ways. Like if, when you do like steps, like which step did he do wrong? He could do it both ways. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of time. Try to solve this one either way. I'm going to pause the video and try it. Okay, so hopefully you did try it. So we got log base 4. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to change this. I'm going to change it into the inverse. I'm going to switch those two spots and get the x on the right side there. So log base 4 of 31. And then I'm going to take a log. I'm going to minus over the 2. Minus over the 2 from both sides. And this is what I'm going to get. So to figure this out, I'm going to go log 31 divided by log 4. See, I'm more comfortable this way because my older calculators didn't have that base button. And then I'm going to minus the 2. And we're going to get x is equal to 0 0.477. I'll show you what it looks like the other way. So alpha window, go down to number 5 there. And let's put a 4, a 31. And then outside the brackets, go minus 2. You get the same answer. That's pretty good. OK. Let's just see what these questions are about before I pull my calculator back up. OK. So you'll see that. Uh, You'll see that logs and exponentials show up a lot when it comes to certain scientific terms. It's it's very easy to communicate something that's in log form or some kind of log scale, but trying to translate what that actually means is a little bit tricky. Like in the Richter scale, you might hear about, oh, it was on, on the Richter scale at a magnitude of 7. What does that mean? Or something has a magnitude of 8. What you have to realize between those two, there is a 10 times difference between the two numbers. Same thing with the pH scale. Like if I have a pH of 7 and a pH of 6, one is 10 times more acidic than the other. So you have to kind of watch out for those kind of scales. If you go up one number, you actually go up by a certain times factor. Both those are um, base 10 because it's a common logarithm. Okay, so decibels as well. Um, they go up by some kind of like they go up by a a logarithmic scale so if i change by one decibel i'm changing by times 10. okay uh so let's try some of these questions so like one way like you might see in chemistry 20 if you don't some chemistry or science 10. i don't know if you do acids in science anymore i can't remember i think you do uh is the ph scale so the ph scale you have this formulas um the way they write it in science 10 they write it this way negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So that's what it looks like. So rather than X, they put hydrogen ion concentration, big brackets like that. But this essentially is just a log question. So I can actually change between the two. And I, down here, we're going to see what's the concentration of hydrogen ion. 
The hydrogen ion is the X here. So how do I solve for X if it's inside the log? Um, let's just read through some of this though. The concentration is in moles per liter, so it's got some units. pH doesn't have any units. Uh, it's in base 10. You guys probably don't have a log there, like a number base there. Uh, yeah, okay. So using this formula, I should be able to solve these two questions. So if I know the hydrogen ion concentration, what is the pH of this solution? So I'm just going to go pH is equal to negative log, and I'm going to put in this number into here, because that's what the X stands for, is the concentration. It says right there. All right, it's measured in moles per liter, and this is in moles per liter already. So I'm just going to go negative log 0 0.001. So negative log 0 0.0001. I think there's three zeros in that. Oh, we've got a lot of beeps going on. So we have four. So the pH is four. That's pretty acidic. Uh, what's the concentration of the hydrogen ion concentration? Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to have to rearrange this equation ever so slightly. Now, most of my log laws, that, or even my, my inverse thing, I can't have this coefficient. This is very important. That's not allowed to be there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it to the other side. So I can divide by negative 1 on both sides, which just ends up being negative pH is equal to log x. So that was like a 4 divided by negative 1 just makes it negative 4. So it just kind of switches its sign. Then I'm going to do the whole switcheroony thing that we did before. The base is 10. My, the negative pH is going to become the exponent, and the X is going to go to the left side there. So X, which is my concentration, is going to be negative 10 to the negative my pH, which is whatever 10 to the power of negative 2 is. So 10 to the power of negative 2, 0 0.01. The negative is there so you don't end up with negative uh, pH values. That's fine. There you go. Oh, concentration. This is moles per liter. There you go. Okay. So we can use um, logs and stuff to solve many different things, too. So here's a couple of different questions. One is about uh, interest, and one is a half-life question. We'll talk about this half-life question in a bit here. But here, this person wants to double their money. We've got an annual interest rate of 5%. So we've got this nice little formula kind of set up for us already. So the $2,000, that's the starting point. It's a growth function, so it's going to go upwards. So they want to know when does this equal 4,000. So we solved these kind of questions last uh, chapter. Yeah, I wanted to talk about exponentials. But now we're going to solve these questions with logs. So well, first of all, I'm going to divide because to do just like we talked about the previous question there, to change between log and exponential, we can't have this uh, coefficient here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that over to the other side. So 2,000 divided, or 4,000 divided by 2,000 is 2. And then I have 1.0. Okay. Now to solve this, because that n is in the exponent, I want to get that n by itself. So I'm going to do that little switch thing. My base, this is my base. It's 1.05. Your base could be any number, right? Uh, usually it's not a negative number, so let's try to avoid negatives there. But my base is this number. These are going to switch. I'm going to put a 2 on this side. And then I can just plug that in my calculator. So log. So I'm going to do the base way. Log 1.05, base 1.05 of 2. So it's going to take me 14.2 years. Now, it's compounded annually, so 14 years is not going to cut it. So if he wants to double his money, he's got to wait till 15 years to get that. Because if I go back here now, let's just double check that. So 2,000 times 1.05 to the power of 14, not quite double my money. But if I do it with a 15 there instead, let's put a 5 there. Down, that's more than double my money. So I got to go 15 years for this to work. 
So 14 years is not going to work, right? So you have to be very careful about how you can answer some of these questions. Okay. So one, one of the keys is that you got to make sure it's in the form where there's no coefficient. So that's why I move that 2,000 over to the other side. You can do the same thing with this kind of question too. There's a lot of useless information up here, but really all they want to do is determine the half-life. They want to know what this little H here is, right? So most what I'm going to have to do for you guys is I'm just going to give you the equation and then you have to kind of show me the steps you would do to get to those answers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the 500 over and get the exponent part by itself. Now, 13.417, oops, that's my filter that I was creating there. 14.3, uh, what is it? 14.3, four ones. I was off there. 13, I want to get this over here so I can see both at the same time. What I was trying to do there. Okay, so 13.417 divided by 500. So this side over here becomes 0. 0.2. 026834. I'm going to keep as many decimal places as possible. Okay, so now I got this nice with no coefficients. I'm going to have to switch between the two. So this exponent, I'll just use, I'll use a different color here. I'll use that one. This exponent is going to switch with that over there. So this is going to be 19 over h on this side. And then I'm going to have a log base a half of zero point, because this is the base here, right? Zero point two six eight three four with the extra zero there. Sorry, I didn't write that there. Okay. Now all this is on this side, that's just the number. Like I could type that in my calculator. I can go alpha, da da. My base is a half. So I can put a half in the base there. And then I can put this answer. Zero point zero two six eight three four that's just the number okay so this is equal to this number 5.21979 so i need to solve for h here it's in the denominator so i'm going to multiply it up to the other side so multiply it up to the other side and then i'm going to divide both sides by the 5.21 number divide this up by 5.219. Okay, I'm going to divide by this bigger number here, not just ending off of the 9. So I'm going to go 19 divided by my answer. So I'm just going to second minus there, pulls up the A and S button. You could just go up and drag it down. You can go up and highlight it, hit enter. So H here ends up being 3.64. It's in days. Everything is in days here. So this is my half-life. So this is the time it would take to come to half. So like if I were to graph this out, you could think about this, what this graph would look like. It would start off with, what would it start off with? 500 grams. The guy bought 500 grams. So it starts off with 500 grams here. And then 3.64 days later, this is the time axis. I'm going to be at 250 grams right there. That's what a half-life means. So if I start here, one half-life, I'll be half as much as it was before. If I have another 3.65 days, so if I times this by two here, so 7.28 here days, that's another half-life. So it's going to be half of what it was before. So it's going to be half of a half. So it's going to be right there. Then another half-life later, I'll be half of a half again. So it has this nice little decay function. I knew it was going to be decay because my B value here is a half. So that's a decay graph. Okay. Uh, let's see what we have here. So we've got a couple of harder questions here. There's actually only three more questions here. So let's... No, we have pretty much. Okay, I'm going to split this one up into two videos because these questions got a little bit trickier. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.